Homies, guess what? April's over, and guess what else? I saw some things. Things that I dare not repeat. Things that will burden me for the rest of my life. But I also saw a bunch of movies and TV shows. Let's talk about it. But before we get into that, be sure to subscribe for more of my great content. I don't know, let's just get into it. Let us go and let us go and let's get it. First things first, I saw Dungeons and Dragons. And I am so surprised at how much I actually liked this movie. I honestly thought this movie was going to be, at the bare minimum, fine. I thought it was going to be passable. I thought maybe I was going to laugh once or twice, and that's it. Now, a little background about me. I do play Dungeons & Dragons. I've been a dungeon master. I've been a paladin. I've been a fighter. I've been a rogue. I absolutely love this game. So part of me was wondering exactly what take this movie was going to have on the Dungeons & Dragons mythos. If it was going to be meta, if it was going to be a crappier version of the World of Warcraft movie, which, I don't know, is that even possible? But... I'm so surprised at how well this movie managed to replicate the feeling of playing Dungeons & Dragons with your friends and have it not be meta. Sure, there are one or two times in this movie where I'm like, okay, that was maybe a little bit of a meta joke, but I don't know if that's what they were intending. But for the most part, this movie's pretty much at face value, just a movie that takes place in the universe of Dungeons and Dragons. And it was so freaking fun. I laughed way more times than I thought I would. I was surprised way more times than I thought I would be. And there were a couple moments where I was like, huh, that actually was a pretty good character moment. And that's where this movie really, really shines. And that's what they understood about why Dungeons and Dragons is so much fun to play. And it's not the story it's the characters. Anyone who has played Dungeons & Dragons understands that the story that you are playing through, whether it's the Curse of Strahd or whatever, that takes a backseat to the character's journey that you're playing. And this movie understood that. A majority of the focus was on every character's backstory, and every character had a satisfying arc. I do think maybe that they could have done a little bit more development on the tiefling character, but for the most part, Everyone's backstory was defined, and everybody had a satisfying conclusion to their character arc. And also, this movie was freaking hilarious. It was so funny. I really, I don't know what, guys, I really, really liked this movie. I also finished Mando season three. I already made a video about that, so yeah, go check that out. And then I finished Bad Batch season two, and I am so sick of every Star Wars fan sleeping on this show. Yes, season one wasn't perfect, but you know what? Neither was season one of The Clone Wars and neither was season one of Rebels. But it's very clear by season two, Jennifer Corbett and all the team at Lucasfilm working on The Bad Batch, they know what they want this show to be. And this show has some of the most fantastic storytelling in all of Star Wars. And it all centers around one specific character. And I'm going to do an entire video just about Crosshair. So please keep an eye out for that. But just know, Season two of Bad Batch really stepped things up. Yeah, there were still some, I would say, mid-tier episodes in the middle of the season. Ones that I might skip over on my rewatch, but for the most part, I really, really, really enjoyed this season and I cannot wait to watch the final season when it comes out next year. I am so excited. With a few more adjustments, he may be capable of racing. Uh, that is hilarious. Ha ha ha. I am more than capable. I am ready to... Where are my arms and legs? Hey, yeah? Did you forget you were working on me? Because it seems like you're just having a conversation about nonsense over there. I have also been watching Teen Titans for the first time. Yes, I never watched Teen Titans as a child. Because, fun fact about me, I was not allowed to watch Cartoon Network when I was little. And no, it's not because my mom thought it was inappropriate. My mom very rarely told me to not watch something because she thought it was inappropriate. If anything, she did not allow me to watch Cartoon Network because she said, these are her words, it's really annoying and I don't want to listen to it. And you know what, sometimes that's fair. But I've been watching Teen Titans, I've finished the first three seasons, and oh my gosh, I really feel like I missed out on experiencing this show as a child. As a huge Danny Phantom, Kim Possible, Avatar The Last Airbender fan, I would have ate this Roger, Roger. up. It's so good. It's so fun. It's everything I love about cartoons. I'm enjoying myself. I also rewatched 13 Going on 30 because it's cute and I'm lonely. And guess what? 
It's still cute. Moving on. Then I went to the theaters and I saw the Super Mario Brothers movie. It was good. It was better than I thought it was gonna be. Now I know it's like the culture of the online film community to rag on Illumination. I'm not really gonna bash Illumination that much because to be honest, it really just seems like children's movies created by an AI. Like attempting to hit big emotional moments, attempting to be entertaining, but something about Illumination films just seems lacking in humanity, if that makes any sense. Now, that being said, the Super Mario Brothers movie was actually kind of good. I would say it's maybe their second best movie they've ever made. The first still being the original Despicable Me. One thing that I cannot understand about this movie, however, and maybe it's because of the influence of Nintendo, but this movie seemed to be specifically targeted at the children's demographic. Now, as we all know, there are children's films, there's family films, and then there's, I don't wanna say adult films, but I can't think of another word, so we're just gonna call it adult films. And you know what I mean, children's films, they are specifically targeted at children. Adults probably aren't gonna get any entertainment out of them and that's okay. They know who they're for. It's fine, they're harmless. And then there's family films, which I would classify a lot of DreamWorks stuff and Disney stuff as family films, meaning they are targeting both the children and adult demographic and both sides can find entertainment in them. And then, you know, there's just the strictly like, you know, only adults are gonna enjoy this movie. So it just seems strange to me that Mario has such a large generational reach. And I know this because more than half of the people in the theater that I saw this movie with were in their 30s. It just seems strange to me that they would specifically have this movie be targeted at young, young children. And if you see the movie, you will understand what I'm talking about. That being said, there were still parts in it that I enjoyed. The animation was pretty. I think that Illumination did a great job in capturing the visuals of Mario. Jack Black is the best part of the whole movie. And honestly, I just want the Bowser cut. I just want every single scene that he's not in cut out of this movie and then just give that to me on like what a 12 minute short film and then I will watch it and enjoy it because yeah he's the best he's the best in the movie I just absolutely adore Jack Black and everything he does giving 150% no matter what project he's given he's just a great guy I wish I'd gotten to see more things this month but you know busy time I got in a car accident I had to figure that out so that was great anyways guys thanks so much for watching if you like what I do and you want to see more don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time I regret nothing. <laughs>